Hey, I'm going to give you a quick tour of how to um, use the software so you can get started quickly. Um, <coughs> here's the software, and this is a picture of the machine itself. Um, when you first open the software, this little icon here shows it's not connected. So what you're going to do is go ahead and um, click that, and you'll choose your COM port and connect. It'll go to this symbol, like connecting, and then it'll probably go to this symbol if you have homing set on your machine. This is normal because it basically means that the machine is not homed yet. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click this triangle and you'll see that it actually homes the machine. Okay, once the machine is homed, you'll notice this this icon here. That means it's, it's ready, but it's not doing anything yet. All right, so what we tried to do in this software is make it a little bit easier um, to use for certain tasks. So um, this right here, this USB jogging, um, I'm going to click on that. That means J for jog. Um, K is for keypad or, or keyboard. In other words, when you type, it'll actually uh, do something on in a text box. When you put it to J for jogging, um, all of those events are then trapped out for the application and you'll no longer be able to type in a text box with a USB keypad. I purchased this really inexpensive one. Hopefully you can see it here. And um, let me go over the controls really quick with you. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that you do not have it in numlock mode. Right now you can see the light is on, so I'm going to turn it off. All right, now that that's off, um, let me just go over. These are all for direction except for the five. The five is for a multi-point save, and we'll go over that later, not in this video. Um, so if I want to jog the machine, I can jog it just by pushing the keys in the appropriate direction. Okay. Um, the period, I made a special key. So if you look at the period, if you tap it twice quickly, you'll notice on the screen it goes to a question mark on the bottom right hand corner. That means that it's ready for um, you to select a mode. Now, number one mode is jogging. Number two mode is set point. Number three mode is to go to point. Number four mode is macro. And I might add more modes later, but that's what we have implemented at the moment. So let's do, um, let's do a pro tip here. If you want to return to this position so that you can home your machine faster, what we could do is actually save a point in the back. So let me exit this and move the machine back to where it was. Okay, very close to the edge. Okay, okay, right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the uh, point twice. Okay, and I'm gonna do two for set a point. And now all of these numbers are different points that you can set. Um, I'm going to use 9, and now that point is 9. So if I jog out of that point, and I push this twice, and go to go to mode, which is number 3, and then push number 9, it goes right back to that point. This would be an ideal point for you to save on your machine so that before you turn the machine off, you can go to this point, that way, when you turn it back on to home it, you'll be right there ready to home, and it'll home very quickly. Okay. Number one and two on the point saves are A and B on the G code generators, and that allows you to generate code quickly. Um, for instance, if you want to do box cuts, pockets, circles, uh, things of that nature. Okay. Back to the screen here. You'll notice um, there's a send file tab. And in the send file tab, you can select the file, and then you can go to preview. This will show you, or attempt to show you, um, what the G code is actually going to look like when you run it. So it's a good feature to have, just to give you an idea. If you want a, a pretty good estimate of how long it takes, then go ahead and put in a feed rate here, and it'll estimate pretty close to how long it'll actually take to, to run that file. Um, now back on the screen, 
We have a, a skip file scan. The file scan uh, produces this information over here. That information could be helpful sometimes to give you an idea of how long, how big the min, max, z is, and x and y, etc. Also, the feed rate. <coughs> um, this ignore unsupported errors. This will ignore any unsupported errors that Gerberl might send back because the program that you're using that generated the code generates some codes that Gerberl just doesn't understand yet. Um, and also I have a ignore Gerberl controller errors while running the file. So this, this, will, this will ignore errors while it's running a file, like not just the unsupported at the header. It'll go past that. Um, now up here, you'll notice the work position and machine position. Uh, basically, these are where you would s you would set to um, set your zero. The machine position is the absolute position. Um, the work position is the one that you'll be setting. The work position is basically uh, where you're going to set your new zero point at. So let's say I have a zero point over here somewhere. Well, let's get it in the camera view so you can see it. Let's say here is a zero. I'm going to move it down like that. OK, so let's pretend that's my zero. So if that's my zero, I can set these. Or you could just click this, and it'll reset them all to zero. I normally set x and y zero, and then I probe for z. Probing for z is done um, over here. You can do a probe. Um, I also have a probe mode on the control pad. Um, actually, number four on the control pad is probe mode, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's probe mode. So um, when you go to, you hit the period twice, then you go to number four, it'll go to probe mode. And number one is the Z minus probe, which is the most common one. And that'll probe straight down until you get to the, the point on your workpiece. Um, these are the points that you save. Um, you can actually, on the keypad, um, they're, they're, they're numbered 1 through 9. Um, here, they're displayed as A through I. Um, but uh, you can add an infinite number of additional points. You would just have to come over here, name the point, move the machine where you want it, and then click on Add Point. Also, you'll notice it has an absolute point or a work, uh, workspace point. These are all the workspaces available. And um, basically, in the works, each workspace can have a different zero. And each workspace can have a different offset. And you can set them all differently, depending on maybe the fixture that you have for your, your, um, <coughs> your machine. Um, all right, so let's say that we're going to go ahead and send this file. Of course, I'm just cutting air right now because I don't have any, um, any, any stock on the, on the machine. But um, I'll go ahead and just click Send here. And you'll see here in this particular instance, it actually went to a pause because this file actually has one of those funny things that shouldn't have in there, which I could have ignored this and I would have skipped that. But I just wanted to show you what would happen. Um, you can always just click the resume to get past that error, which is what I just did. And it'll continue through the file at the point. So you can see here, this is a cutting operation. And while it's cutting, you can go ahead and increase your uh, feed speed and your spindle speed. So if I think it's going a little too slow, maybe I want to speed it up, I can go ahead and move that. You'll hear it slightly change difference, and you'll see how, f how much faster it goes. And you'll also see here these last feed and last plunge rates. Um, so that gives you an idea of what, the, what you can do while it's, while it's running. You can pause it at any time. You can resume it at any time. Um, <coughs> at that particular time, it happened to already be at the <laughs> just at the end, so you didn't see, you didn't actually get the full effect of the pause and resume there. But um, you get the idea. In the log screen, this is where you can actually manually send G codes and stuff. Um, for instance, this is all the settings, so you could go through and grab all these settings out of there. Um, that's just to give you an idea. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the basics go. Um, there's tool change. There's some really cool angle stuff that I got in here. 
And in addition, we have projects which we can build out uh, projects um, and it'll do them step by step in an order and then you can pause in between. And we have G-code generators. We can do uh, boxes, circles, slots, drill, and you can do arrays. So you could do an array of these and basically um, an array would be, you would give it an offset from point A and it would do the array that many columns and that many rows deep based on those uh, offsets. Um, Multipoint you can use, um, that's with the number five while you're jogging, you can actually add um, points in here. And you could use that to maybe trace out a template if you wanted to. And then you could go ahead and generate the G-code. Um, we also have an engraved text here, and we also have a half toner, and we also have a picture to G-code. And over here we have a memory which allows me to save A, B points so that I could come back to them. So let's say I wanted to do kind of like an inlay or something on a box or a square or a circle. I could save the, the two points A and B, and then I could make it one cut on the inside of the box and another cut on the outside of the box, and then pretty much they would fit together because the two points would line up. You might have to sand it a little bit, but it would be pretty close. And then also over here we have the feeds and speed assistance, and this is coming soon. It's not quite there yet, but this is going to allow you to go ahead and um, try to calculate your feeds and speeds to, to um, accommodate different cutting solutions um, for your router uh, bit and your flute count and your chip load. And it'll also reverse calculate the chip load. So you could, let's say we know for a fact that we cut plywood at 90 and at, uh, you know, 2100 RPM, then <coughs> we know that the chip load for that material is this. So then you could save this in the materials. That's eventually, it's it's almost there. I just have a little bit, a few more hours of work to do to, to make that in production. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you get an idea of how to use the software. And it's fairly intuitive, fairly straightforward. I tried to put some help in there a little bit as far as the tool tips go. And I'll hopefully be able to uh, do more later. Anyways, thanks.